The the big thing to remember, and it's something I harp on a lot um, with Limit Hold'em, it's just it would be nice to always kind of you know flop the best hand and just bet it all the way and get paid. But there are a lot of situations that come up where you don't really flop anything, and you kind of have to tread through murky waters, and it's not always comfortable. Um, a lot of people, especially that transition from no limit, uh, find themselves in a lot of uncomfortable spots where they have weak holdings and don't want to continue. Um, because it just feels dirty for some one reason or the other, and I, I totally understand why. Um, you know, you don't want to be like the calling fish. Like ev everybody knows that, you know, the idea of the calling station being the fish and the guy who plays bad because he just calls everything. But the nature of the game is such that most of the time you're not going to have anything, and the guy who's willing to fight for pots and kind of hang around is going to win a lot of those pots unimproved. And that's in poker the fold equity idea, and just um, it's huge. So you know, that being said, with People always fighting for pots. You got to keep in mind that you know you don't want to be giving up. If you're gonna if you're gonna win, you have to be fighting back in certain spots, and certainly spots where you have uh, enough equity um, to justify it. So, um, the A7 here. This is a slightly different situation than the last one because this is a hijack open and we're in the cutoff. So we still have a live player behind us, and this guy's range is likely a little bit tighter than the cutoff open. So that's a situation where I think the fold is fine. There are some opponents you'd want to three bet there, um, the looser guys that, if you know, are, are play loosely or, or play badly, um, you know, or both, obviously. Um, or, or that would be the dream opponent to be three betting with that type of hand. It's, you know, you, you don't always need a, a cannon to go to war with guys who are, are loose and bad. But we don't really know enough about this guy. Um, to make a boy or a girl of it, so a uh, full dare is fine. And the four eight is uh, is a muck from another the gun raise. Ten five suited will be mucking. King six will be open raising if it folds around. And the three eight in the top right, our hero will correctly fold. And now this king six off becomes a fold. Six two soft is uh is would be a little too loose to open in the small blind. Uh six two suited, excuse me. Um I I actually have seen some good players do it, but um it's it's not correct. Um And the 5-8 is a fold, of course. Okay, so not really too much information we can grind her from that hand. Um, the opponent on the button there just had nines and drilled them all the way. Nothing to be really scared about and no reason not to, so can't really gain too much information from him on that one. Um, so the ace-3 suited, very easy open on the button. I'd open ace three off as well. The ace five off was the correct fold there. King ten is an easy open on the button, as is king jack in the cutoff. Okay, so we flop a Broadway draw here. Uh, not the worst of flops. This is one we'll often just win right away um, if we just bet out. And we do bet out here. And, uh, and then on the top right, just going to kind of keep an eye on that hand. Um, this button had cold called, so uh, we're going to be going to war with this guy out of position, both blinds folded. Um, and we get check raised here on the bottom left. Uh, you definitely want to peel here and see what comes on the turn and possibly even try to re-steal. Um, it's kind of hard to say. A, a lot of guys will be check raising this with any Broadway draw, um, any flush draw, so you don't really want to just be giving up here. And there's a likelihood that even just spiking a king in your hand would make your hand good, and a jack is obviously good all the time.